even the like, whatever whenever we say logic or whenever we say let's reason this out if you really look at it what exactly is the logic and the reason it is based on some data from the past right from that data when you bring it then you call that hey this is logic this is a logical thing to do right this is a reasonable thing to do so the second practice what i'm giving you is have an ability to look beyond the lens of logic and reason because most of the invention which happened was because someone sat there or thought about it and decided, no, let me park this logic and reason for a moment and let me delve a little more deeper and look into things. Right, what did Steve Jobs create actually? He didn't create anything. He assembled things which were already created. Why did he make personal computing? mainstream computers was there already but when he said yeah we need to create something people said but why would people need it and he asked well did they ever use it before no then how would they know whether they need it or not so have the ability to look beyond the lens of logic and reason and the third thing which I would recommend you to put in your kitty is go beyond, how should I put in? Don't embrace failures, how about that, right? No fear of failure. We have conditioned ourselves. Why we fear failure is not because of anything else, not because of that failure itself somewhere we have created a competitive mind and a comparative mind let me repeat it again a competitive mind and a comparative mind because of that all of a sudden failure seems big it's huge so no fear of failure these are three things which i want to put in your kitty today the first thing, something to anchor yourself, a practice, right? Every day morning, I'll get up and I will have a solid 15 minutes to half an hour of me time. I'm just going to sit and I'm just going to have only this one thought that everything will be okay. I am blessed. That's all have this huge sense of well-being early morning the first thing you wake up and you do once you wake up is this a date with your own self sit in a corner or have a nice place to sit have this great sense of well-being great sense of gratitude and say yeah everything will be okay everything will be all right Simple practice, yeah, nothing complicated. Literally to sit in a corner for 15 to half an hour, 15 minutes to half an hour and just have this thought that, yeah, things will be okay. That's the first thing. The second thing I said, go beyond logic, go beyond reason go beyond people, go beyond what others expect from you, right? Try to operate from a different plane, right? There is this plane, this physical plane which you see, right? Which seems so real, but there is another plane. Very few of us seldom think on that plane. Sometimes we talk about it, especially when we go on a funeral or see someone, someone leaving their body or something like that. We go through a little 
sense of that plane. But then again, we fall back into our amnesia. But there is something else. There is something operating in that other plane. Access that plane in your silence. And it's a beautiful place. It's not something to be scary about or anything to be worried about. No. Right? Look how many people has left us, right? If that place was that bad, they would have come back. <laughs> well, this is a little joke which I tell people. No one came back. So there is something great. That does definitely doesn't mean that so what? We all should be going to that plane. That's not the thing. The thing is to have a little understanding about another dimension. Something is there. Something is more subtle but more powerful operates on that plane. Right? When you touch that plane, when you access that plane, there is a lot more healing which you can feel in this plane. Right? Interesting, right? You are accessing that plane in your silence, but the healing happens in this plane. Your medicines start to work more effectively. Your diet will be a little more conducive, a little more beautiful. Your health would be much more, right? So what is that plane I'm talking about? It's silence, love happiness, silence, love, happiness. Take time, be there, sit there, and enjoy the silence. Really fill yourself with love. For no specific reason, be happy. Happiness doesn't mean that there is, uh, it has to be a, a system, a give and take policy where I need to get something to be happy. I need to give something. Now, so when you try to access that plane more and more, more and more, when you try to access that plane, what happens is the logic and reason of this plane will start to dissolve. you will be a little more courageous. You will say, let me take a step a little more. Let me try to do something which I never did before. This leads us to our third point. No fear of failure, right? So if you really look at it, you were born without fear. There was no fear as a child, as a toddler when you came into this world, right? There was no fear. Because you never understood the concept of failure. Why? Because no comparison, no comp competition, not competing with anyone. You really hardly care about what others say. And you don't com compare. Compare with whom? One fine day, you're gone. What comparison, what competition? Right. So once you have these three things, right, anchoring some practice to anchor yourself, your ability to look beyond um, logic and reason, and no fear. Now for a moment, just let these three things sink in you. I have this beautiful practice. Early morning, I wake up. I ground myself. I be with my own self. I say, yes, this is a journey. I'm here. There is an exit somewhere. That's okay. Let me enjoy this picnic. 
and I'm grateful for everything. Everything. And you have this ability to look beyond. You know, logic says this, reason says, but that's okay. There is more. Have this keen vision to look beyond and see. And don't have any fear, especially of failure. It's okay. I fail. Great. I'll get up and dust myself, walk again. Right? Because when you are stumped or when you're pushed into a corner, Always try to take one step forward. At least get up, take a step. And that step, let it be towards your spiritual growth. Did you get it? When I'm stumped, when I'm pushed into corner, when I... Let that be the thing. I will make sure that my so-called failure or so-called um, me being pushed to a corner, I will make sure that I'll take a step. And that step would be towards my spiritual growth, right? not towards any materialistic growth or any, no. That'll happen. Don't worry about it. Don't go beyond that. You will just say, you know what? I'm going to take one step and that one step will be towards my spiritual growth. So let's define spirituality here, right? You all may have known this. Maybe many other speakers might have said this, but still for the completion of this topic, let me give this again. Spirituality means just these seven things. Right. It has nothing to do with religion. Peace, purity, love, happiness, bliss, wisdom, power. That's it. That's spirituality. So when you're pushed into a corner, when you find yourself stumped, when you find yourself blocked, your first step, you know, take one step towards any of these seven things. Maybe I'll go towards peace. Let me take one thing that... You know what? I'm not going to put anything in here. Because immediately here, the chatter begins. Why, what, how, when? How is this going to get resolved? What if this happens? Oh my God, what? Peace. I know all your questions are valid, but for the next one minute, I'm just going to shut you all down. And then I'll go back to my peace. See, that's why I didn't give this initially. That's why I first gave you these three things which I want you to do in the kitty. Because unless you do, do those three things, it becomes difficult, right? I'm going through a situation and all of a sudden, oh my God, now where do I get peace? Well, you just, you just don't wake up one fine day and say, you know what? I'm going to participate in Olympic race. Now, the preparation happens way before. You have to prepare yourself. That's why I said self-doubt, you all might have encountered. I'm, I may be wrong, but I think you all might have. If you haven't encountered yet, then very soon you will encounter self-doubt. Am I doing right? Am I doing wrong? Is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Is this the right thing to do? You all will encounter. Right? So that's why have this practice. So this is where when you are pushed into a corner or when you find yourself cornered, this is what happens. Sorry, let me put my phone on mute. Right? Because this is the thing. When these practices start to become, take, uh, 
very integral part of your life and it becomes an integral part of your life and it becomes when you own these things you will appreciate life because life is going to squeeze you right self doubt you'll put into self doubt it will squeeze you right so let me put something in a very blunt way when you are squeezed what comes out of you is what is inside you simple right this is the mantra right what is the mantra when you are squeezed what comes out of you is what is inside you this is it so when i am being cornered or when i am pushed or when i am make this as when you have these three things in your kitty you have anchored yourself strongly you have the ability to look beyond oh boy this happened to me oh boy this happened to me this happened to me no nothing happens to you write this down write it down a hundred times nothing happens to you everything happens for you simple then you can look beyond no this is not happening to me there is something in it which is for me right you can understand this that's why i said when you have the ability to operate in another plane then you can take that step towards your spiritual growth a little more peaceful a little more love a little more happiness a little more bliss a little more wisdom or we will become wise a little more powerful right so that's why it is said self empowerment it didn't say self enrichment self materialistic growth no it's empowerment right something a power needs to grow from within and these powers are spiritual in nature you being peaceful you being loveful right because if you start to fight against it then time has a way has a very unique way to beat us and bend us and bring us to our knees it will if not today or tomorrow right it has a way to really put us to our place and show us who the boss is so the best thing is if time is so powerful then let me make time my friend right as simple as that so here i am with these three things so i have something to anchor myself a practice and you will start to build on this practice right if you can take 5 minutes early morning half an hour then you will try to even have something a similar practice in the evening morning evening anchor yourself have it then you will seeing things not within this plane you are seeing things beyond this plane right when i say plane it means my ability to see things and operate on things from here there are different planes right you all might have known this or else no harm in repeating right the initial the first simple plane is the physical plane then there is another plane which is a little bigger plane which is the um reasoning plane and there is another plane which is huge absolutely all in compass that's the spiritual plane right the physical plane the reasoning plane and the spiritual plane 
the physical plane says it acts on the laws of physics, right? On the physicality of this world. So if I choose to operate from this plane, I'm saying that I will believe what I see. I'll believe what I touch. I'll believe what I taste. I'll believe what I hear. I'll believe what I smell. My belief system is based on this. So that means you're operating on a physical plane, right? And you all know, since you're all here for a session, I'm pretty sure you all know that that plane doesn't work well, right? Because see, if I think that, you know what, whatever I'm going to hear, I'm gonna believe that. Oh boy, we are in trouble. because that plane is physical plane. And physical plane has its limitations. So that's why we go a little beyond. That is the reasoning plane, which is a little big. This is where the scientists and people of, um, they, they operate from that plane of reason. They say, you know what, I don't trust these eyes. You can believe whatever you see, but I'm not going to believe it. There's more to it. So they invent these things like microscope, stethoscope, periscope, micro, all these scopes, right? Because they are, they, they say, you know what? My plane is a little bigger. I don't believe what I hear through these years. Sorry, you can believe it, but I want more. There's more to it. There's more than that. So they haven't got all these radar, sonar, to get things more, what is there in this plane, right? So their plane is reasoning, plane of reasoning. And then there is this absolute huge plane, which is spiritual. I don't know if you all might be new to spirituality or you all might be very well accomplished in spirituality. Either way, you all know that there is that plane where the difference between you and me vanishes. Right? There is no you and me there in that plane. Right? Even the whole concept of, you know, it's, it's we. We talk in terms of energies. Even before a single word is spoken, you have exchanged a lot. Your eyes gently rest on another person's eyes. Not even eyes, just maybe in the middle of the forehead. And a lot is communicated. A gentle smile on your face, a gentle smile on another person's face. You know it all. This is an absolute, a lot, a lot can be communicated in that. And that is where you have mastered this language, this powerful language, right? You have mastered the language of silence. It's a very powerful language because you can misquote in any other language, all right? Hey, he said this, well, I heard him say this, well, this is what it is, that is what it is. You can misquote in any language, but you can never misquote me in silence. Hey, he said that, well, he didn't say anything, but a lot can be exchanged, all right? This is how we even, uh, define stress, right? In many sessions also, I have given this whole thing about stress, right? How do we define stress? Stress equals to force over area. There are force applying on an area, right? If the area is small, there's a lot of stress. If the area is big and this, this force is happening, there's no stress. So if you think that there is forces acting on you 
And if I feel that I can stop those forces, no, right? We all know that. But what I can do is I can choose to change the plane in which I can operate. I'm not going to operate from this physical plane, nor I'm going to operate on this um, plane of reasoning. I choose to operate from this plane of spiritual, where I force myself and tell myself, this is something good. Start with that. There is some peace involved in here. There's love involved here. There's happiness involved in you. Right? You go into that. And then you will start to see the spiritual plane. The more you are in that spiritual plane, the more beautiful it will start to spread. And you will be happy without reason. So for spiritual plane, what should I do? Let's start off by understanding these two words. Right. Awareness and observe. That's it, simple. We start off with just two things. Awareness and to observe. To be aware, to, be, to observe. To be aware, to observe. Right. These two go together. Awareness means you are, it's nothing but preparation of the screen. You're preparing the screen. That is awareness. Some way you say, yep, I'm going to be aware. Aware of what? That means you are preparing the screen. You just got the screen and you're positioned the screen. Let me put the screen in this direction or I'm going to put the screen in this direction, or I'm going to put the screen in this direction. So that means there is this little box and something is going to happen in this box and I'll be aware of it. Right? You can start off by putting that screen in a physical plane and see. That's how you begin. And what happens when I set the screen? The next thing what should happen is to observe. Right? So all I, all, all, all I do is I got the screen, I put in here and I start to observe. What does observe mean? Ability to see what happens in the screen. It's an ability. People doesn't have that ability. They can't observe. But here's the key thing. Ability to see what happens in the screen without interfering. You won't interfere. Ah, uh, this needs to move. Ah, uh, that cannot be there. Uh, this needs to be adjusted. Ah, uh, this, nothing. You're aware of this. I'm not going to be aware of any of this. This, this is my focus point. Let me put the screen and I'm going to observe. Something's coming, something's happening and something is going. Great. Awareness and observing, right? So when you sit in silence, when we said, when you are in that practice, try this, just to be aware and just to observe. For the next 10 minutes, I'm just going to be in that state of AO, awareness and to observe. Be there, just sit and observe. Be aware of the surrounding of the place and see what is coming in, what is going. And once you have got a hang of what is happening in the physical plane, use the same technique in the reasoning plane now. Right? What thoughts are coming in, what it's doing, and how it goes. Just sit and observe. But now when it comes to the spiritual plane, 
this is where the beauty is. You are aware of something which you are. And you observe as something which you belong. That thing belongs to you. You be aware of peace. And let that peace belong to you. Why do you think we hear to so much of commentary, of meditation commentary, meditation music? Why we gently gravitate towards it? Because somewhere it is operating on a spiritual plane. Right? And then when you're on that plane, actually, you will go even beyond that. That'll be like a stepping stone and then you're gone. You go into the deep silence. Interesting, yeah. Can we do this practice? Yeah. From tomorrow, right? Try it out. This whole ability to put a frame, put a screen and observe. Start with physical things. You're sitting in a corner, there is something's coming, something's happening, something's going. You see someone come into that frame, something's doing something, and then they spill something without their knowledge and dresses the template temptation to clean it right away. Just saying, yeah, okay, let's see what's happening. Well, unless it's a costly carpet or something. Still, it's okay. You can just go and there are beautiful cleaning materials. Nothing at the cost of your spiritual growth. Right, when you're sitting, there is another screen, you have placed yourself a screen, boom, phone is ringing, just wait. Don't pick up. And then see what is happening if I'm not picking up the phone. That chime, immediately my head has to turn, I need to grab. Why, why I need to, my head should turn, why I have to grab? Let me not and see what's happening. See what I'm trying to do here. These physical things, you are slowly trying to understand with your observance how your inner being has been conditioned. A ringing phone always have to be answered. Who said so? Are you still? Are you silent? Just be. Then you can slowly shift the screen and then slowly look into your inner being. Put the screen and see what's happening. There's some situation happened, right? It can be anything. Someone left body, someone died. You lost something. You lost job. You lost your health. Doctors come and say, sorry, you've been diagnosed with such and such a disease. Hold it. Don't react. Observe. What's happening at this very moment? I got bombarded with this news. Am I still anchored right let's go back to our beginning first topic what did we say three things practice right have something to anchor yourself you hearing these news you hearing these situations you seeing witnessing these situations you should be able to anchor right this is where i will give you this two words Many of you know this words, but still this is just for the completion to make this session a complete session. I'm gonna give this to you. It's a simple word, all right? This we'll use it for our anchoring purpose. And it just means Om Shanti. That's all it means. That's your anchoring. Why I'm giving you this? 
because when the situation is staring at you right in front of you, you don't have the luxury of going back to Brother Gokul session, the video link and listening to the whole thing and then say, okay, what did Brother Gokul say? You don't have that luxury, you don't, right? At that moment, there's only a split second in front of you. You're waiting at the doctor's room, doctor come out, okay, by the way, you're diagnosed with <gasps> bomb. No, that split second determines how your next state is going to get unfurled. So in that one second, you don't have the luxury of listening to the whole thing. So what, what are we going to do? We are going to use this mantra. Om Shanti. Om means I, that's all it is. I, the being. And Shanti means peace, right? Why peace? Because we said we need to operate on a spiritual plane. And what is spirituality we define? Peace, purity, love, happiness, bliss, wisdom, power, right? So immediately I want to bypass the physical plane, the reasoning plane, and I need to get here. And how soon I need to get in an instance. So that's the reason we have this as a mantra. Om Shanti. I am peace. Nothing at the cost of my peace. Oh, Brother Gokul, by the way, you are diagnosed with, okay, Om Shanti. Oh, Brother Gokul, by the way, your car is gone. It's total off. Okay, Om Shanti. Oh, Brother Gokul, by the way, you lost your, okay, Om Shanti. Let your own, let the I be peaceful. Anyway, there is chaos out there. Why to put that chaos even here, right? At least 50% of it, it's cut down. Did you get it, right? Among the entire chaos which is happening, 50% of the chaos is cut short like this. Just with this one mantra. Om Shanti, I am peace. Then there is no self-doubt. Then there is no like, what is this happening? Is this going to... No, you are empowered. When this is at peace, believe me, the creative juices which comes and oozes out of the self is amazing. All you have to do is get this thing into a state of peace. Calm. No confusion. No, non-oscillating. Here and there, maybe I have to do this. No, 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 I should be doing this. Oh my God, why did I do this? No, 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 I should have done that. Well, I couldn't have done that. Nothing. Oh, Shanti. So once you are in that, this thing, and you get into the plane, then... You will see solutions will, has, has to come to you. And you can look back and you will say, oh my God, I can now understand why such a thing happened. What was the significance of that situation? What it has to lead to? Everything. And don't look through our prescribed ways of thinking. Something happened, oh my God, this is something bad which happened or something good which happened. No, these are all prescribed by the world, by my experiences in life, by my understanding, by my cultural. That's why I have given the second thing, that ability to look beyond the lens of the so-called logic and so-called reason. Because when you look through that, it is through the past data. This shouldn't have happened. That shouldn't have happened. This is bad. That is good. No. You go into the spiritual plane and you will think in a different way. There is something which needs to be cleared so that something can be added. 
Interesting, right? To think in that way. No, something has to be cleared. Because when you are really in that state of spirituality, believe me, you will say, right? It's family, so I'm saying this. It's okay. This is what you will say. It's okay. Even it's okay for me to leave my body. It's what a big deal. Wow. Why I'm holding on to it. I had a wonderful run with this body. And I understand, if I understand spirituality deeply, it's another body I'll take. No big deal. It's okay, but it's not okay for me to leave my principles. We live our life by principles, my peace, my love, my happiness, not at the sake of these things. Then you, there is no, no fear then. Really, you will see, yeah, I can experiment, I can do things. Then you are getting out of this whole thing of your autoimmune disease of the intellect, which has been crippling you, which has been putting you into self-doubt, which is putting you into thing that, can I do it? Cannot I do it? What should I do? And shouldn't I be doing it now? Whatever it is, I'm doing it. Even if it fails, I don't mind. It's okay. I laugh it off. I'll say, wow, I tried. I think it was a dumb thing to do. Let me do something else. Imagine you will be living a life of no regrets. Because you tried it. You tried. You, and You never give that story to yourself that you are a failure. That's all it matters. The other people, they can give their own stories. They can. The people who write history doesn't have a history of themselves, right? They are only busy writing the history, but anyone do anyone know about them? No. But they write history about someone who doesn't care about history. Because <laughs> they are busy living. They are busy living a life and saying, yeah, I don't fear this. Let me try this one. Let me try this thing. Let this happen and let me try it. So now to add to all this, this is how we get out of this self-doubt, right? These are all different pointers and techniques. And now for self-empowerment, develop on this beautiful quality of being of embracing this dichotomy. These two extremes, you should be able to wrap your head around it. There are two extremes, but if you need to wrap around it, you really need to go that far so that you can wrap this extreme and this extreme. What are those two extremes? Totally detached. Totally, that's the key word. Be totally detached from things. And totally loving. These two things you should be able to grasp. Totally detached with your own self, with others, with people around you, with situations happening around you, with everything you should be able to detach. 
That's why I have given those techniques, right? Which is going to lead to the state of being totally detached. Something you're anchoring, your ability to look beyond lens of logic, your fear of failure. What, what is this all helping you with? But along with that, it's a very difficult concept to have totally detached, but then you have to be totally loving. You have to check, is there any, even a little bit of disappointment creeping in or hate or vengeance or totally loveful. I love this person, I love the situation, I love this. I love it. Once you kind of get a grasp of these two things, oh boy, you will understand empowerment in a different way. Because nothing will hold, pull you down. Nothing will hold you down. You're running after one object, one thing to another thing to another thing without fear. Because you love it. Life, you, you, you love life completely. And if anything happens to you, it's okay. You can detach it and you say, it's okay. Because in the big realm, in the big higher scheme of things, you understand. When I came into this world, I didn't bring anything. Nothing. Everything is extra. So why worry? Who is losing what? No one is losing nothing. And then I will go back. And I'm not going to take anything from there, but I'll go back with my hands full. No one can take my experiences. No one can take my love. No one can take my peace. No one can take. I'll go back for. Right, looking at the time, I think I might have put many of you to sleep, but that's okay. Um, any questions before we? Does anyone have anything to add? Any questions to ask? Anything which you think is? Or did I put you all to nice, beautiful sleep? Because it's not your mistake, don't worry. I have a tendency to make people fall asleep. So yeah, that's why I'm just checking. <laughs> yes, no. If there's no question, then I can go on. Just checking if there is any questions which anyone has. Because what we need to understand is there are three layers um, of spirituality, right? When I say we, we have spoken about this whole spirituality, right? right? You might be into this, stepping new into this realm of spirituality. Means, yeah, I understand few things, but yeah, I don't. No, maybe, may not be good, yeah. But still I think anger is natural. Still I think peace is impossible. Still I think that greed is a common tendency. This I put it as very new to spirituality, right? because I'm very much hooked on to working from this initial plane, this plane of um, the physical realm, where I'm always controlled by these elements. And uh, I'm so in awe with it that I'm not able to get myself out of it. Right, and the things what I hear, the things what I touch, the things what I smell, the things what I, this is real for me. This is everything for me. But I know there's something more and I'm gently stepping in there, but I'm not there yet. Right? This is what I call people who are in, very new into that spirituality. Then there is this intermediate, right? 
they understand spirituality. They know that, yeah, there is certain things. They have certain practices too. They have some religious practice. They kind of go to a temple or a church or a mosque or they have something, right? But they are still not clear on many things. Then there is professionals, right? They understand, no, there is another whole dimension which they have access to, they understand it. They are trying to kind of get more from that. They're trying to kind of make most out of that, right? So if you are in any of these three things, we will try to give certain practice to kind of take you to the next level, right? So if you find yourself that, yeah, I'm very new to spirituality. Yes, I understand. I want to get into that other things. Then I recommend two things to you. All right, this might come as a surprise and it might, but it's a very beautiful exercise, All right? So incorporate these two in your life. One, embrace boredom for a couple of minutes in your day. Everything need not be physically exciting all the time. Once in a while, let's embrace boredom. I'll put the phone down. I don't want to look at the screen all the time. Wow, I need to play this game. Then I need to do this. And then I need to go. I need to do this bungee jumping. I need to do that. Let me sit. Absolutely. I'll pull my chair. I'll stare at the wall. Better still stare at the window, right? It's better. That way I can uh, start to practice on my awareness and observe to observe but the point is let me go into the state of boredom willingly it's okay i'm okay to be bored for the next 15 minutes and i'm going to do this religiously maybe for three months from may has just begun right so till the end of may right let me just say yeah this entire May till 31st of May, I'm just going to take five minutes of 10 minutes of my time and I'm just going to be absolutely bored to death. <laughs> just sit and stare blank, right? And then when you're looking at blankness, what will happen? You need to embrace something else. So you first embrace boredom. The second thing is love silence. Because, okay, I'm bored, then you will be tempted to kind of access something physical in nature. No. Try to go into silence. Love silence. The key word is love. I love the silence. Nothing extra, nothing I need. I can just sit in a corner. I just look at things and I'm okay. Just to observe, to be with myself and say, if you want, you can put an alarm for the next 15 minutes until that alarm goes off. That's it, I'm observing. Right? That's all. Simple, no complicated things I want you all to do. When you're new to spirituality, if you are intermediate in spiritual, yeah, you understand certain things. Then there are some other two things which would be recommended to you, right? First thing is purity. If you're in that intermediate space of spirituality, go into the depth of purity. Because now you know there is another plane and you need certain downloads from that plane into you. That download can happen only into a vessel which is pure, which, which is clean, right? The vessel it becomes a very important part. If the vessel is dirty, clean, whatever is falling in, it doesn't even, you won't even know something is there because of the thick layer of dirt. So if you're in the second le level of spirituality, try to embrace purity. 
in a very deeper and practical way, right? You like to drink pure water, you like to eat pure food, why not consume pure thoughts? Let not my eyes, ears, any physical organ deceive me, the being. And you will love it. You feel all of a sudden a sense of divinity within. So the first thing you embrace is purity. And then just added to it, there is something else. You will prepare your mind to grasp subtlety, right? To go to look at things beyond what meets the eye. That should be your practice, purity and grasp subtlety, subtle things. Be with people who are spiritual in nature. Try to understand the unspoken words. Try to understand those little subtle gestures. And be with Dalai Lama, see him, how he talks, how he walks, or maybe some other learned person, or maybe in Brahma Kumaris, if any senior brothers, sisters are coming. See, try just any spiritual, the subtle thing. Understand that. You grasp the subtle signals around you. That will become a huge blessing going forward. Because many things will get very clear even before it comes to you. Right? So if you're new, all you have to do is embrace boredom and love silence. And if you're in this intermediate state, um, purity and embrace subtlety. And now if you are in the third state of spirituality, where you are absolutely, you love silence, you are connected, there is deep understanding which you have about your own self, about the world, then let me throw a new term here, a new line, a new mantra, right? It might be very new thing, but it's a very interesting thing. Um, maybe you may have to write it down. It's, it's a long word. It's a, it's a couple of words. It says, spinners of discus. You know, discus. You need to spin. Spinner of discus. And what is that discus? That discus is of self-realization. That's why I said it's a long word. <laughs> Spinners of discus of self-realization. If you are in the third state of spirituality. Why? Because when you are in that state of spirituality, mostly what happens is, there are things which will be thrown at you. There are things, but your main thing is those things should not stick to you. Right, it can be someone else's comment. Someone says this, someone says that. You are seeing certain things, you are, you know, because things which are spinning, nothing will stick to it. It'll just fly off, right? It is spinning on a fulcrum, on a center point, and it spins and spins. What is it spinning on? It is different states of being which you need to embrace. That is what is the spinning. And where are you spinning? You're spinning it here. Why I'm spinning it here? Because so that nothing else gets mixed into this mind. Because the mind sees something, the mind is doing something, the mind is, it gets stuck to it. I don't want that, I need to protect that. 
I can't ask the mind not to give. Its duty is to dump things at you, but I need to spin. So these are these five aspects which I need to hold and I need to kind of spin. One, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, four, five. The first aspect is and that cycle, that spin, that discuss is I am an eternal energy. I'm just an energy. Pure peaceful, happy energy. That's all I am. And once you start to gain that experience of you being just an energy beyond this body, then gently work on your second step. That I am potentially divine being. Why it is important for that is because the moment you start to say, I am divine, your intellect will start to say, yeah, right, seriously, brother Gokul, what are you even talking? You divine, do you know, just the other moment, the way you kind of was so angry and mad and upset, this doesn't go well. This is the autoimmune disease of the intellect. Your intellect will make sure that you're crippled, you're kind of put down. No, you have to beat yourself to it and say, no. Yeah, I had those moments, but still I embrace divinity. I, that pure energy, can take the form and be the form of something which is divine, something which is pure. And once you have that experience, sit in that experience, immediately go to your third experience. That is, I am the one whom I've been waiting for. Right? We've been hearing this for long. But now you experience that for some. The same, the persons whom I cried out, I prayed, I wanted someone to come and put an end to these miseries. Guess what? That's me. Whatever situation I'm going through or I'm put in, only I have the ability and power to fix it. It's me. Sit with that for a couple of moments. Let it marinate inside you. Let it be with you. Right from your energy, just me, a pure energy, you travel your cycle, you're spinning the cycle. From there, you went into I'm divine, no matter what anyone says, even you yourself saying things to put you down. Those self talk which you give, this is the self talk I'm spinning. No, I'm divine. And from there, I'm coming to the point I'm the one whom I've been waiting for. And then once you sit in that concept, that huge experience, slowly you get into your fourth. That I'm being sustained by the Supreme himself. Whether you like to use the word God or the Supreme being, whoever it is, there is someone about. Maybe we should have a separate session just to explore that concept. There is something, someone up there. And he will take the role of protecting you. Like he will take three roles, basically. Many roles, out of many roles, these three are prominent roles. One, he's gonna protect you. Two, he's gonna teach you. Three, he's gonna guide you. So the fourth state, what you experience is, yes. I'm being protected and I will be taught and I'll be guided. I will be. Things will come to me. Things will unfold. I'll understand. Then you go into your fifth state where you are a server. Now you are able to serve. Serve like an angel. You are become a conduit 
or something from above, something divine in nature. I can serve people. I can touch people's heart. Then again, start. Yeah, it's a cycle, right? You are the spinner of the cycle, discus. You are the spinners of the discus of self-realization. What is a self-realization? This is the self and I'm realizing the self that yes, I'm an energy, I'm just an energy, and yes, I'm divine, and yes, I'm the one whom I've been waiting for, yes, I'm being sustained by the Supreme, and yes, I can serve the world. Interesting. Yeah. This you will do when you are in the third stage of spirituality. Now don't mix. We have sometimes find ourselves as an intermediate person. Sometimes I find myself very new. Sometimes I feel I'm very high in spirituality. So the challenge is to find where am I? Sometimes early morning I find I'm very intoxicated then use this. Sometimes I feel, no, I'm a very newbie. Then, Right? So these three things, when you're new, you think you're very new in spirituality, embrace boredom, embrace and love silence. That's all you do. Don't do anything else. At that time, don't try to spin the cycle. Nah, it doesn't work. And when you find yourself, yeah, I have this beautiful something is telling me to go into silence. You're loving silence. You're just, then you know you're in that intermediate space. So try to increase your purity within and try to get the subtleties of life work on that and then once you feel that yes accessing peace is easy for me accessing love is easy for me then be a spinner of the discus of self-realization right any questions or did i confuse you all further I think that um, Karuna had popping up. You had a question. Oh, I'm good, sister. Actually, brother actually answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> See, you made sense even. Oh, for a change, I did. <laughs> So my question, my question was going to be, how do we, um, you know, as as practitioners who've been practicing for a while, I think one of my challenges is to, you know, to maintain that state of detachment yeah. and, you know, to maintain that state, right? Like, especially when you come back into the drama of the world, it's great when you go to the center and you're like, okay, you know, yeah. I can, I can sustain this. And, you know, the entire weekend when you're at the center, it's, uh, yeah. it's really beautiful. Yeah. You know, but then the second you come back into the drama, maybe you can sustain for a day or two. But, you know, how do you keep that long sustenance? You know? Yeah. Very good. So that is what it is, right? Why do I even go to the center? Because I understand the energy field there. And why do I come back to my home? So that just to compare that energy field which I'm seeing in the center. And there is, and there is, an, okay, there is this, how much it is different, how much it is close. And all I can do is work on only these things, right? Okay, let me sit and invest here. Let me try to make my home into a center. What energies I need to make. And you feel you're draining and go back to the center. The center is supposed to be that safe haven, that space. Go there, be. And most important thing is, yes, when you're in that home, you be that spinner of that discourse of self-realization. The more and more you spin, till your intellect stop fighting you. That autoimmune disease of the intellect, right? It says, come on, give me a break, Gokul. What, you divine? Did you even know what divinity is? Yeah, these are the self-talks, which is self-deprecating and putting us down. And, but you will say, that's okay. I'm gonna battle you. I'm gonna fight you this. You keep saying me I'm bad, but I'm going to keep spinning the cycle. And a day has to come. It will come where 
it will yield. It's a no point telling you, you know what? I'll just keep quiet. Okay, fine, whatever. If it rocks your boat, fine, you are divine. Great, move on. <laughs> and you say, yes, I am divine. Yes, I'm the one whom I've been waiting for. Yes, I am a conduit. I am feeling and being sustained by the Supreme. And yes, I can serve. It's not just politicians who are there, who write policies, who serve. No. Sitting in the corner, I am ready and I'll serve as an angel. Touch people. Right? Very good question. Yes. Anything else? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Yes. I, I do have a question. Um, do you have uh, a mantra or something to not to dwell in regret or guilt when such certain situation has take, gotten the worst or best of me yeah. and feel frustrated that I should have or could have done better, but then feel regret or guilt. So how do you get over that? Or how do you process that? No, there, don't process. That's the first and the first, foremost important thing which I need to resist is to stop processing. And this one mantra, I'm going to give it to you. Use it very firmly. Write it down and repeat it as many times as it requires, as it takes. And that is simple. It just says, whatever happened, happened for the good. Whatever is happening, is happening for the better. And whatever is going to happen, is going to be the best. Immediately, your intellect says, come on, give me a break. Seriously, what, what are you talking about? What are you smoking? Are you really? It's okay. You intellect can say all these stories, but this is what I'm going to repeat myself. Is that going to be right? Is it true? Is it wrong? This is your intellect's game, which will kind of come in between, and it will try to kind of cripple you. The whole point of the exercise is there is chaos out there. At least let me not have chaos in here. And you will be surprised when the more you repeat this, slowly, somewhere, the inner being will start to accept it. And then you will have a different lens and then you will be surprised how you will look back at it and say, yeah, that was the most crucial event which was needed in my growth. For now, so don't when, analyze it. Yeah. Okay. So when you say this, um, you self-talk that whatever happened was for the good, whatever is happening is for the better and what will happen is for the best. Does that, how does it help the feeling or the pain or hurt you're feeling inside? How does how do you come over these feelings of that? Very good question. See, the feeling is very important in, an integral part of our lives. Feeling is a mechanism, right? It's a feedback mechanism. Without feeling, I cannot live in this world. Everything it has to give a feeling. But understand, it's a feedback mechanism and it has given you a feedback. And yes, this is where you understand these two words. Acknowledge, but don't associate. You got that feedback. You are acknowledging the feedback that yes, I got it. Thank you for the feedback. But right now I choose not to acknowledge. I'm not, I, I don't want to be myself into a state where I want to kind of go into a unending loop where I'm not able to get out, nor I'm going to get in. Because this is what I've been saying, right? The autoimmune disease of the intellect. Intellect is so subtle and so sharp that if it cuts you, you are crippled for life. The pain will make you so crippled. So this thing that we will find ourselves in that same thing, I'll be repeating. You might have seen people Whenever you meet them, they'll be saying the same thing. The moment you can just know, oh, this person's coming, he's going to say, tell the same thing, the same story, the same thing. I want to get out of it. It's not because I want to seek revenge on someone or I want to have the notes. Only for one thing, 
that I don't want someone to live a rent-free life in here. Enough. Okay. You have lived a lot in me. There is someone else. Let him take care of it. I enough of he living in he, she, that, this, that situation, whatever it is, 90% of this is blocked, is surrendered to you. Enough. So if you don't process, you say do not process. No, no, no. If Processing shouldn't happen at that moment. This is like saying tolerance. Tolerate things, tolerate. I stop saying people to tolerate. Don't tolerate. Don't even mention about tolerance. Don't even work on tolerance. Instead, you need to work on something else. And that is to be full. Just make yourself that you're filling yourself with things and spiritual in nature, with love, with beauty. Make yourself full. So full, so full that your tolerance will become very automatic. People will look at you and say, how are you tolerating so much? Like, really, did I tolerate anything? No, you didn't tolerate anything. That is tolerance. But how did it achieve? Not by you working on tolerance, but you working on being yourself filled with love. Mm. So in a similar way, don't process it when you're in this state of mind. No, it is going to cut you and it will cut you hard. I need to process it, not right now. I need to process it once I get into a state of total bliss. That's why I'm not even saying love, not even saying peace. Peace, go into a state of bliss. That is where I work on. And then I'll come back and I'll process it. Then you will come to a proper closure. And it needs That's to happen soon. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for giving that insight. Thank and you. I'll definitely need to uh, work on it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Shanta. Um, we have time for one more question. Ananta Narayan, would you like to ask? Yes, uh, thank you. All. Um, as a retired physician, I like your word uh, description, autoimmune disorder of the intelligence. And uh, my take home message today will be that, as well as the treatment for is steroid therapy in the form of spiritual um, meditation using the drug Om Shanti. Mm -hmm. Beautiful input, beautiful input. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and prescriptions are free. <laughs> <laughs> yep, you know where to reach, where to go. So, uh, Goku, would you like to finish with some meditation or silence so that we can honor the space that we've been sharing this evening? Sure, definitely. Yeah. So let's just take a moment and drop everything. Everything. From here. At this very moment, I go into a state of fullness. I'm full. Let me take myself into a state of gratitude. Let this be my anchoring point. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the life I lived. I'm grateful for what has come to me. I'm grateful for things around me. going beyond the lens of logic and reason. I'm in a different plane. Plane of spirituality. Where it's all encompassing. The difference 
just falls apart. There's no fear. I have everything in me. I'm totally empowered. And let me embrace the silence. And I know for sure that silence is my original language. It's not just absence of sound but it's stillness of the mind. And with this language, I can be aware of anything, including the inner mechanism of the being. And I can observe. I have the ability to see everything which is happening in the screen. I can see through it. And I can let go. I'm totally detached. totally loving. I'm just this beautiful energy. I am divine. My divinity. This little speck of star. We gently grows and fills my entire being. It recharges me and I can do anything where I apply myself. I have the company of God himself, the Supreme Being. He will protect me. He will teach me. He will guide me. And that's for a fact. And I know I'll be a conduit of God himself. I can serve without any strings attached. I will touch people. to make them understand their own innate potential. We are a beautiful human family of 8 billion creative minds. And for all of us can operate from the spiritual plane. It will be heaven on earth, for sure. But for now, no matter what situation comes in front of me, I have the mother.